Hey everyone, we are back from Sri Lanka and had an amazing time there. We visited this beautiful country in April and in this video we will be sharing with you our ultimate two-week itinerary. This itinerary will bring you all around the best places to visit in Sri Lanka. Tambula, Sigiriya, Kendi, Nuwaraelia, Ela, Yalla National Park, Mirissa and Unawatuna. This itinerary is looping all of those amazing destinations to save time. And of course, you can also do it in reverse. That's the beauty of a loop itinerary. So, if you two are planning a trip to Sri Lanka, then let's dive right away in this two-week itinerary in Sri Lanka. On the first day, arrive in Sri Lanka through Colombo International Airport. Exchange right away money as it is the most convenient place to do it. Then, transfer to your accommodation in Negombo. You will be staying in Negombo rather than Colombo, as it is closer to the airport and closer to the rest of the itinerary. Once settled in, have your first experience of the local cuisine. After breakfast, hop on your driver's car and then head towards Sigiriya. Make a first stop at the beautiful Dambula Cave Temple that features 53 Buddha statues, 3 statues of Sri Lankan kings and 4 statues of gods and goddesses. Once out of the cave, be sure to walk until the Golden Temple and be aware of the monkeys. Then drive until Sigiriya, where you will have lunch After checking in, take a tuk-tuk to Pidurangala Rock to admire sunset as well as the beautiful Lion Rock. On your way back, stop for dinner in a local restaurant. After breakfast, take a tuk-tuk to the Lion Rock. After visiting the museum, start the hike towards the top of the massive rock that used to be the capital of King Kashiapa and on which he built his palace. Once out of the complex, it will be time for lunch. Later, head back to your accommodation as a jeep will pick you up for a safari in a local national park. The beginning of the safari may be slow, but once the temperature is lower, majestic elephants can be spotted. At the end of the safari, take a well-deserved shower and head out for dinner. After breakfast, Leave for Kendi. On the way there, stop at the Tooth Temple, one of the most sacred temples in Sri Lanka, as within its wall is located one of Buddha's tooth. Once out of the temple, you can walk around the lake and then head to KCC, a huge shopping center in the heart of the city. From there, head to your accommodation and check in. After a little resting time, take a tuk-tuk and visit the most beautiful garden in Sri Lanka, the Royal Botanical Garden of Kandy. If you are lucky, you may even meet some local students. Finish the day with a local and homemade dinner in your accommodation. From your accommodation, head towards Nuwaraelia. Right outside of Kandy, stop at the Ambuluwawa mountain tower, which not only offers stunning views but also lots of fun. Climbing all along the narrow stairs is super amusing and crossing people even more. Your next stop 
will be a viewpoint on the side of the road, from which you can see two waterfalls. Right before Nuwara Elia, you can make a stop at the La Boucalier Tea Lounge for a tea factory visit. It is short yet interesting. If time's allow, you can spend a few moments in Nuwara Elia for lunch. If not, head straight for Nanuoya train station as you will embark on the most famous train ride in Sri Lanka. It will take you around 4 hours to reach Shella, which will give you enough time to enjoy the breathtaking views from the train, as well as making tons of photos and videos of you hanging out of the doors of the carriage. Once in Ella, it will be time for dinner, before going to your accommodation. In the morning, hike to Ella Rock. The trail starts along the train rail tracks, so it's an interesting first part of the trail. Later, it goes up up up, toward the beautiful viewpoint of Ella Rock. Be sure to go to the second viewpoint, which is located a few minutes after the first one. On your way back, we recommend that you stop and enjoy a fresh giant coconut with a stunning view. Oh, and be sure to watch out for trains while walking on the rail track. Once back in Ella, go for lunch in one of the many restaurants in town. After lunch, you can stroll around the city center of Ella, visit a few of the stores there, and then go for a delicious ice cream. In the afternoon, we would recommend chilling in your accommodation by the swimming pool, or you can also consider going to the pool bar near the Little Adam's Peak. And in the evening, take a cooking class. It's a fun and immersive thing to do in Sri Lanka. But don't worry, you could also do that later in Mirissa or even in Unawatuna. That day is a spare day in Ella that we would have loved to have. Spend it by chilling in your accommodation, admiring the beautiful views of the countryside. Or head to Lipstone Seat, a tea factory located south of Ella. It's a nice attraction to do, and you can combine it with the Dialuma waterfall that has a small pool where you can swim. In the morning, take a tuk-tuk to visit the Nine Heart Bridge. Be sure to go on both sides, and even on the feet of the bridge. Once out, hop back in the tuk-tuk, and then hike to Little Adam's Peak. After Ella Rock, it will be an easy hike, yet the views are quite amazing. After a final lunch in Ella city center, head back to your accommodation. In the afternoon, transfer for Tisamaharana, the town located next to the Yala National Park, and on the way, be sure to make a stop at the Ravana Waterfalls. At 4.30 am, you will leave your accommodation for Yala National Park. Once in the park, be sure to focus, to try to spot all the wildlife. We were lucky enough to have seen most of the big ones, like the sloth bear, leopard, elephants, wild buffalo, deers, and so on. And this is without counting all the birds. Breakfast was served at 9 am on the beach inside the Yala National Park. It was awesome, and we truly loved the whole experience. Once back in town, transfer for Mirissa. After checking in your accommodation, head out for lunch in the city center of Mirissa. And then, head out or sunset at the sacred beach. And maybe take your first swim in the Sri Lankan water. Or head back to your accommodation for giant bat watching by the swimming pool. After a delicious and local breakfast, rent a scooter and head out to Coconut Tree Hill to see one of the most Instagrammable spots in Sri Lanka. From there, you can walk down the hill towards Turtle Beach be sure to check out both sides of the beach. If you don't have your snorkeling equipment, you can rent it there. And be sure to ask the locals where are the turtles, 
they will gladly help you. I personally saw two turtles in five minutes. Head to the city center for lunch. Merissa has so many great restaurants. In the afternoon, chill a bit as the sun will be quite strong. And by the end of the afternoon, visit Spice Salem, our favorite local store for souvenirs. Then visit Weligama and its beach before heading back to Merissa. This is another day in Merissa that we would have loved to have. In the morning, go for a whale watching tour, which is one of the best things to do in Merissa and Sri Lanka. In the afternoon, enjoy the swimming pool or go at the beach. Start the day by visiting Parrot Rock, a beautiful rock in the ocean providing stunning views. From there, walk along Merissa Beach and spend some time there. Or go back to Turtle Beach to see more of the turtle. Once back in your accommodation, get your things ready and maybe do a final jump in the swimming pool. Then take a tuk-tuk to Unawatuna and on the way stop at one of the turtle hatchery. We actually liked the one we visited and learned a great deal about turtles there. After checking in your accommodation, rent a scooter and drive to Gal Fort, where you will explore this stunning old town, walk along its cobble street and enjoy some of its old buildings. Take a morning stroll in Unawatuna Beach, one of the longest beaches in this area. After breakfast, head to Turtle Beach. Yeah, there are many Turtle Beach in Sri Lanka. Time to visit the one in Unawatuna. What is cool there is a natural pool has been formed along the beach where you can truly enjoy calm waters and where turtles are resident. At the end of morning, get to the city center for lunch. Unawatuna also has lots of great restaurants. After resting during the warmest hours, it is time to explore a unique spot in Sri Lanka, the Peace Pagoda, a beautiful monument intended to represent harmony between people of any and all backgrounds. Drive to Henwela Beach, a more local beach where you can see local fishermen. Right next to it are located the Talpe Natural Pool. Even if they are not natural and they are man-made some 50 years ago, they are a nice thing to see. After breakfast, time to hit the final beach of this itinerary. After parking your scooter, hike to Jungle Beach and enjoy a beautiful and secluded beach where the ocean is naturally calm. Around noon, head for a final lunch in the city center. If you have some spare time, take your last swim. And finally, get your transfer to Colombo Airport, as unfortunately, it is time to return home. And if you want to save time planning your trip to Sri Lanka, and later travel worry-free, we created a digital map with over 200 pins, including things to do, restaurants, accommodations, points of interest, trails, routes, and so much more. With this map, you will have all the information you need to travel in Sri Lanka. And guess what? It works on Android or Apple phones, as well as PCs. In bonus, you get lifetime access, as well as all the future updates. So, if you want to know more about our Sri Lanka travel map, we put a link in the description.